Hello and welcome! Today we're going to be checking out this guy, the Moza Moen Motorized Gimbal Camera. Now the camera is not particularly new, but recently we've seen some pretty hefty discounting on it. So now at its new low price, the question is, is it now a viable low-cost alternative to the popular DJI Pocket 2? Stick around and let's find out. So Moza launched the Moen camera about two years ago, and it was clearly intended to take on the DJI Pocket 2. Its list price was a little bit lower than the DJI Pocket, but I think most people agreed that it really wasn't able to compete. But two years later, we now are seeing pricing on the Moza Moen camera of about half the price of the DJI, in some cases even significantly less than half the price. So now we have to ask the question, can we look past some of its shortcomings in order to view the Moza Moen camera now as a viable low-cost alternative to the DJI Pocket 2? Now we're not going to do a full-on comparison between the two cameras, we're just going to go through a few sections to highlight some of the key differences in order to help you make the decision as to whether this might be a viable option. So before we get started, the usual disclaimer. This video is not sponsored or paid for in any way. All of the products featured were purchased with my own money and the opinions expressed are entirely my own. Check out the description where you will find the chapters of this video, so if you want to skip straight to a specific section, you can do that. I've also placed product links to the products featured throughout this video, as well as some of the equipment that's used to create this video. So I don't want to bore you with specifications. If you want those, then best place to head is each company's website. In this section, we just want to focus on the highlights, starting with the similarities. So both cameras offer a three-axis motorized gimbal for image stabilization. Both offer 4K video up to 60 frames per second. Both offer 4K time-lapse capability, including the ability to move the gimbal during the course of the time-lapse. Both have HD slow motion modes up to 240 frames per second, although the DJI does have a slight advantage in final resolution. Both offer selfie modes with built-in face tracking, and both offer automated panorama modes where the gimbal moves while taking shots and then stitches the results together in camera. Finally, both have fixed batteries with a claimed battery life of over two hours. Now the key differences between the two cameras are first of all in the sensor. So the Moser has a 1 over 2.3 inch sensor, which shoots stills at up to 12 megapixels. Whereas the DJI has a larger sensor at 1 over 1.7 inches, and is able to shoot stills at 16 or up to 64 megapixels. So the DJI should have an advantage when it comes to overall image quality. One area where the Moza has an advantage is in its screen. So it has a 2.45 inch diagonal articulating screen versus the one inch fixed screen on the DJI. Now the Moen camera comes in this rather well-designed packaging. It's very simple, has some basic instructions. And it also comes in this nice carrying case, which is great for packing it away in a bag. Inside here, we also have an included USB cable for charging, and that's about it. Comparing the design with the DJI, you can see they're quite similar, but of course the Moza is quite a bit larger, mainly due to the flip-out screen that we'll talk about more in a second. So the Moza has a very simplistic design, and one of its biggest features is of course this great flip-out screen, which 
Personally, compared to the DJI, I really appreciate having this very large screen. It makes it very easy to access the controls, see what you're doing, also see what you're filming as well. Control is basically just these two buttons. One is the on-off switch, which also doubles as the mode switch for switching between still shooting and video shooting. And of course, the record button is used to start and stop video recording, or if it's in a still picture mode for taking stills. Everything else is done through the touchscreen. The touchscreen is definitely a nice addition, but I will say that it's a little bit lagging in its functionality and sometimes you, it's hard to select exactly what you want. So it takes a little bit of practice and maybe a little bit of patience. Here you can see the comparison of working on the screen on the Moza compared to selecting things on the DJI. Now having the flip out screen obviously means that the overall camera size needs to be larger which in itself is not a problem. I find that it's still pretty compact and actually the slightly larger size makes it pretty comfortable to hold. Now I do feel that having this larger body on the camera, they could have made more out of it. For example, they could have had a larger battery. They could have included a three and a half millimeter microphone jack. And certainly one of the glaring omissions on this camera that they could have included was a tripod mount or any other means of mounting this camera. They advertise this camera as being able to do up to 60 second long exposures. You can do time lapses that may take hours. You can set it down and enable face tracking to follow yourself demonstrating something. You can do panorama shots where it takes multiple shots and stitches them together. And you're expected to do all of this by standing it on a flat surface and hoping that it's not gonna move. I just simply don't understand what they were thinking when they didn't give this a tripod mount. One other point regarding the size is once you're done using the camera and you want to put it into a pocket or a bag, you don't wanna just thrust one of these gimbal cameras into a bag without somehow protecting it. So yes, they provide this nice case, but the case is rather big, particularly when you consider what DJI provide in terms of this nice sheath to carry around your DJI pocket. So that's another area, I think, uh, of concern. So let's start out by comparing the two cameras under standard 4K video at 30 frames per second. Now you'll notice immediately that the DJI shows significantly better detail, even though these are both shot at 4K resolution. A second thing to notice on the Moser footage, if you look at the bottom left, you can see some significant distortion of the image around the edges of the frame. Finally, if you look into the dense part of the forest, you'll see that the DJI provides a lot more detail probably due to increased contrast or dynamic range. In our next test, we want to check not only video quality, but also how effective is the stabilization. So we're filming at 4K 60 frames per second, and we're slowing it down to 30 frames per second in post in order to get that nice smooth cinematic look. And you can see the desired result on the right hand side from the DJI. But if you look at the Moser footage, you can see there's still a significant amount of shakiness in the image. If we switch to a more forward facing view, and again, I'm walking extremely carefully here to avoid any unnecessary shaking. You can see here again, the DJI does a great job of stabilizing the image and the Moser continues to struggle In the next test, we want to test face tracking. So I set up both cameras in selfie mode with face tracking enabled, and I wanted to see how well each camera tracked my movements. Now, as long as I didn't do anything too extreme, both cameras were able to track me without any problem. Although I did notice that the DJI was a little bit more responsive and quicker to track me. 
But let's see what happens if the camera loses sight of my face. Here in this experiment you can see that the Moser actually wins by reacquiring my face and continuing to track me, whereas the DJI loses me and has to be reset in order to continue face tracking. I tried the experiment a couple of times and got the same result each time. Next I wanted to see how each camera would handle sudden movement. Here you'll see the DJI performs a lot better and is able to quickly track me and consistently regardless of my movements. In this test the Moza did not perform quite as well, frequently struggling to keep up with my movements. But to its credit you'll notice that it always manages to reacquire my face and begin tracking again. Okay, now we're going to do a microphone test on both of these. So I have them both in selfie mode, both are recording. So that is what the raw, unprocessed audio track sounds like, straight out of the camera. For each clip I recorded, I had to put the soundtrack into an external audio editor and up the gain pretty much to the maximum each time in order to get usable audio. So all of the following Moser clips that you'll see have processed audio. Okay, now we're going to do a microphone test on both of these. So I have them both in selfie mode. Both are recording in 4K 30 frames per second. And as with the other tests, we have everything set at fully automatic. So right now we're recording inside in a nice quiet environment. In just a moment we're going to take it outside and see how the microphones handle that. We're also going to show the difference between using the onboard microphones and using ex an external microphone which the DJI allows and see how that sounds. So we are trying out the onboard microphones of the Moza and the DJI. I'm going to switch to the Moza so you can hear now the sound is coming from the Moza Moen camera internal microphones. I'm trying to speak pretty clearly and loudly so hopefully this is coming through okay. And now I'm going to switch to the DJI microphone. So now we're on the DJI microphone. I'm talking very clearly, so hopefully you can hear me okay. Let's switch for a moment back to the Moser Moen. Now how does this sound on the Moser? And again I'm going to switch back to the DJI, so how does this sound on the DJI? Now what I'm also going to show is the difference a, an external microphone makes. So the DJI supports an external microphone. If you buy the Creator Combo Kit you actually get this external microphone included, which is wireless. Simply turning it on now connects it to the DJI, so you're now hearing me through the DJI using the external microphone, which I'm just going to place down here on my shirt. And again we're going to walk and talk, and you're hearing me through the DJI. Now I'm going to switch back to the Moser camera, so you can hear again, this is using the internal microphones of the Moser Moen camera. And again we'll switch back to the DJI with the external microphone. Now one other thing to mention regarding audio are the beeps and clicks from the camera itself. You'll notice that each time you start a recording you get a beep, and when you stop a recording you get a double beep, and any time you press a button while recording you can clearly hear the loud clicking sound. Now the beeps can be turned off, but it's nice to have an audible confirmation when you start and stop recording, and it really should be pretty easy to suppress that from the audio track. Every so often a newcomer enters a market with a new and lower priced product that really gives the established and higher priced products a run for their money. This is not one of those times. So clearly when you compare it to something like the DJI Pocket 2, the Moza Moen really doesn't come close. But even taken just on its own merit, 
I really see no reason why you would buy this camera. Let's start out with stabilization. Now, stabilization, as we saw in our test, was not good. Uh, and let's face it, that's the number one reason you buy a gimbal camera. When it comes to video quality, the video quality was not terrible, but to be honest, it's really no better than you can get from any modern smartphone. As for audio, the level of audio coming out of the camera, together with the strange clicks and beeps that you get on your soundtrack, mean that every clip you take is going to have to be run through an editor in order to get acceptable sound. And then there are the strange things like the omission of a tripod mount. I just simply don't understand how you're supposed to use half of the features of this camera without being able to somehow mount it in place. So even at a price of $170, and I've even seen it less than that, I just don't see this as a good buy. It really doesn't offer anything that you couldn't do with your smartphone. With a couple of exceptions, of course, but if you really want to have super stable footage, if you want to have face tracking mode, if you want to do motion time lapses and things of this nature, buy yourself a gimbal for your smartphone and you'll get far better results. And here you can see a quick example I took of comparing the cinematic footage shot using the Moza Moen against using my iPhone connected to a gimbal. As you can see, there really is no benefit to having the extra camera. So there you have it. Uh, unfortunately, I simply cannot recommend this camera. Uh, if you cannot afford something like the Pocket 2, then you're better off with your smartphone and a gimbal. Thank you so much for watching today. If you have any comments, any questions, any suggestions for future videos, please go ahead and put those into the comments section. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button and also consider subscribing to our channel for much more content around tech, travel and leisure. Thank you again.